Hello, good morning and welcome to Health on Tracks. My name is KG and I'm going to be with you all the way till 2 p.m. But right now, we are going to be talking to Mr. Jason Tiong Kion Kai, a pharmacist with the Ministry of Health Malaysia with the Pharmaceuticals Division at the Penang State Health Department. And today, he will be talking to us about staying safe after the flood and also managing cough and cold in children. Hey there, good morning, Mr. Jason. Uh, good morning there. How are you doing today, Mr. Jason? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Thank you. All right. So how's everything up in Penang? How's the weather like? Uh, the weather is pretty fine here. Okay. Uh, not much of rain. Mm-hmm. Okay, so everything's okay. All right. Thankfully, it stays uh, that way. Uh, but of course, today we are going to be talking about staying safe after the floods, right? And as you know, it Malaysia has been hit by a number of floods all over Malaysia, not only on East Malaysia, but also West Malaysia and some cases up in Sabah and Sarawak as well. Now, moving straight on to the questions. Now, flood has major implications, especially in terms of management of patients' health and in relation to supply of medicines and also consumption. Now, what are some actions that can be taken by patients in order to use medicines safely during the flood, Mr. Jason? Okay, uh, so first of all, like uh, before I uh, continue, right, I would like to express my heartfelt sympathy to those uh, affected by the reason flood. Mm-hmm. So uh, let us not give up during these uh, challenging times and uh, always remember to take care of yourself and stay healthy. So as we all know, when there is flood and uh, most of the time patient will be required to move to the uh, flood evacuation center so uh, in this case right uh, patients are always advised to bring along their medi- uh, medications uh, as well as the medication record to the evacuation center and the reason is being uh, to prevent the uh, medication from being damaged or lost as the first one and uh, the second one in is to ensure that the chronic uh, patients do not miss any of uh, the dose that, that needs to be taken. So uh, when prescription of uh, medication uh, brought along, right, so it will help the healthcare workers in flood evacuation centre to identify the uh, medications taken uh, by the patients. So uh, in addition of then patients are also reminded not to share their medications with anyone else, even though they are experiencing the same symptoms. Mm-hmm. So this is because right, the medications that is suitable for that particular patient uh, may not necessarily appropriate for the use of uh, other individuals. Yeah. So in any cases that if the patient uh, lost his uh, their supply of medications due to the flood the patient should be referred to the medical team on duty so uh, usually uh, when uh, there is a flood evacuation center is established uh, normally there will be a mobile medical team uh, which is who, who will be ready to help so typically this medical team will carry along uh, with flood Keep containing uh, medical equipment, mm-hmm. uh, medicines for the treatment of the flood victims. Um, so, therefore, the patients who do not carry any medications with them, uh, they should inform uh, the medical team so that the patient can be examined and appropriate uh, medications can be given by the doctor. Mm-hmm. Like in, in a position like that, it should be um, you know quite important for the patients uh, themselves to know exactly what medication they are on, what's the dosage, and all that in case they lose access, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, uh, don't share your medicines because one main thing, like uh, I mean, like for a single thing, like maybe some heart disorder, there might be three or four different types, and sometimes yes, a certain patient, uh, if if you're going to share it, a certain patient might have an allergy, so you. Please don't share your medicines. That's exactly what you're getting at, right, Mr. Jason? Yeah, even the doses may different, be, be different uh, for uh, different people. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Now, of course, after the floods subside, uh, in terms of the medication, what are some steps that they can take you know, to make sure that they are still feeling good and healthy? Okay, so uh, when the floods like, uh, begin to subside, right, uh, the patients are advised actually to seek treatment or supply of uh, to and to get the supply of the medicine uh, mm-hmm. of at the nearby health clinic or hospital. Uh, so uh, the doctor will examine the patient thoroughly and uh, medication can be given based on the patient's current health status if uh, deemed necessary. Mm-hmm. So uh, any medical records or prescription of medications will also be replaced if they are, they are missing during the flood. 
Absolutely. And uh, one thing I would like to uh, highlight here is that uh, medication exposed to floods or contaminated water are not safe to be used. Uh, so don't use uh, any of the medication that is uh, being exposed to uh, to flood water. So uh, mm. because uh, this will actually cause a lot of uh, side effects, serious side effects. Mm-hmm. And uh, if uh, these medications, all your medications has been exposed to or contaminated by water from the flood, uh, you should dispose them properly. Mm-hmm. And also, a few types of uh, medication that require storage in cool temperature, uh, for yes. example, mm-hmm. insulin or uh, antibiotics in liquid form. Mm-hmm. So if the electricity supply has been cut off uh, or affected by the flood, so the medication may be uh, damaged and they should be uh, disposed and also replaced. Mm-hmm. This is because uh, the changes in the storage temperature uh, will affect the efficacy of the medication. Mm-hmm. So uh, in case there is any uh, thing that you are unsure of in terms of the storage or whether or not the medication is safe to be used or not, always seek the advice from a pharmacy. Oh, okay. And uh, like when you say exposed, right, uh, Mr. Jason, uh, like say for instance, you have uh, tablets in uh, blister packs and if they they came into contact with water, but they were not exactly like there's no test on the blister pack or not, are they still safe to use or do you suggest that they remove the lot and then get new fresh prescriptions instead? Uh, in this case, right, it is always uh, advisable for them to bring back to the pharmacist and to let it, like, you know, to to be evaluated whether or not that medication uh, is still uh, 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 efficient or is still like safe to be used. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, sometimes it's very difficult for us to uh, to judge just by, like, you know, we need to see that a lot of things we need to consider when, uh, like, you know, deciding whether or not that medication is. Is still uh, still can be used or not. So in that case, right, always uh, bring the medications back to the pharmacist to uh, have them check out. Mm-hmm. Always better to have the opinion of an expert all the time. Yes, correct. All right. Now, of course, uh, Mr. Jason, we are going to be uh, focusing more on a specific topic today, and uh, it's about cough and cold medicines for children. Now, what are some of the major concerns that? Okay. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, as we all know, cough and cold are the common symptoms that are often contracted by the population in general. Mm-hmm. And it is occurring even more frequently in children and the elderly, especially uh, mm-hmm. with the current uh, wet weather that we are experiencing throughout the, uh, the country right now. Mm-hmm. So coughing is a form of self-defense mechanism to prevent germs from entering the airway through the nostrils or throat. Okay. And a study done in uh, both public and private clinics shown that the practice of giving cold and cough and cold medications, uh, particularly to children, is very common in our country. So this indiscriminate use of cough and cold medicines in children has become a public health concern because of their possibility of serious adverse events occurrence, especially in children. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people may not know that actually the Ministry of Health uh, has stated that the use of certain cough and cold medications is contraindicated for children below two years old because this uh, medication has potentially dangerous and even fatal side effects for them. Okay. So, uh, uh-huh. Everyone, I mean, healthcare practitioners, including doctors and pharmacists, should be well aware of this as well. And it is also very important for the parents to understand the risk involved when administering these medications to their children. Mm-hmm. So, indiscriminate use is one of the biggest concerns that uh, you know uh, they're facing right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, how would you identify that the medicines that you give to your children are actually cough and cold medicines, Mr. Jason? Okay, so uh, most of the times, right, the parents or caregivers uh, should take their time to read the labels on the medications mm-hmm. uh, before administering them to the uh, child. So uh, if you are not sure about uh, the kind of the types of medication that you are administering, uh, uh, do watch out for the terms. Uh, to identify uh, cough and cold medication, mm-hmm. such as if the label state that uh, it is it, it helps to reduce sneezing or runny nose, most of the time uh, it will contain anti-histamine. Uh, next is uh, 
a prince uh, dry cough uh, means that it belongs to a group of antitussif. Uh, if relief, it mentions relieving congested or blocked nose. So most of the time, it's fall under the group of decongestant. Next is uh, expectorant, helps to loosen up mucus for easy removal through coughing. And last but not least, uh, mucolytic agents uh, to help to loose mucus uh, for easy removal through coughing as well. Mm. So in Malaysia, right, mm-hmm. uh, all the pharmaceutical manufacturing companies are actually required to include a specific safety warning mm-hmm. on the label and package instead of cough and cold med- medications containing antihistamine, antitussis and or decongestants. So the label should, uh, most of the time, they should read like this. Uh. So it will mention like when used for treatment of cough and cold, it should not be used in children less than two years of age. And also, it also will contain uh, uh, something like uh, to be used with caution with doctors or pharmacists advice in children two to six years of age. Oh, so when, mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you receive uh, or bought any cough and cold medications containing antihistamines, mm-hmm. antitussis, or decongestants, always remember not to give these medications to children less than two years old. So um, this would mean for any children that's between the age, uh, not only discounting for those who are below the age of two, but till the age of six, it's always better to make sure that if you're going to give them any medicine of uh, that has a potential of managing cough and cold, always ask for advice from the doctor or the pharmacist firsthand. Yes, yes, correct. I mean, but uh, I mean, like, uh, if uh, if the children is below two years old, mm-hmm. right, you shouldn't be given uh, at all. But ah. I mean, if the children is over two years old, in between two years to six years, it's mm-hmm. always good to seek the advice of from the doctor or pharmacist before you start using that. But yeah. for any children mm-hmm. that is below two years old, uh, it should never be given to them. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for that. Now, uh, Mr. Jason, we are going to be taking a short break. And once we come back, we'll be talking about the side effects of cold and cough medicines, especially when you are given to children below the age of two, right? All right. Okay, so uh, just wait on the line for about three minutes and we're going to be listening to a song. And once we come back, we will be talking again to Mr. Jason Tiong Kion Kai, who's a pharmacist uh, with the Ministry of Health Malaysia, the, van- uh, the Pharmaceutical Services Division with the Penang State Health Department. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be back right after this song. All right, welcome back to Health on Tracks. This is KG and I'm with you all the way till two. But right now we are talking to Mr. Jason Tiong Kion Kai, and who is a pharmacist with the Ministry of Health Malaysia. Malaysia, and he's with the Pharmaceutical uh, Services Division, and he's from the Penang State Health Department as well, right? So we are talking to him right now. Hello and welcome back, Mr. Jason. Hello there. Uh, right. So early on, we talked about how to identify the medicines, and you said uh, all of them have their own separate uh, categories, and they have certain keywords that parents can look out for. Now, of course, right now, we are going to be talking about what are the side effects of this cough and cold medicines, especially if they're given to children below the age of two years old. Okay. Uh, like I mentioned uh, just now, right? Uh, children below uh, age of two should not be given any cough kind of cough and cold medications that contain uh, decongestant, antitussive or antihistamine. And reason being that it uh, can cause uh, serious and possibly life-threatening side effects. So antihistamines right now, we start with antihistamines. Uh, example, uh, such as chlorpheniramine or diphenhydramine. These are the common active ingredients mm-hmm. uh, being used in those uh, antihistamines have been associated with uh, side effects. Cate- Characterized by sedation, dizziness, tremors, uh, central nervous system, depression, irregular heartbeats, and even seizures. So mm-hmm. another antihistamine, uh, such as promethazine, has shown linkage to fetal respiratory depression. So in other words, administration of antihistamine to a small children may cause them to have difficulty in breathing, and this may lead to death. So oh. when given mm-hmm. cough and cold uh, medications to children over the age of two, I mean, this is just now uh, uh, mentioned, like, do, do not give to children below age of two. So now is if you really need to uh, give to children above the age of two, parents and caregivers should use with caution and uh, always uh, advisable to seek 
to seek the advice and recommendations from the doctors or pharmacists because uh, it can cause harm to the children if the medicines is given more than the recommended dose, either uh, too much or too frequent, and also uh, with other uh, medications that contain the same active ingredient. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, we call it as polypharmacy. Okay. Now, would antibiotics actually cure the child's cough or cold, uh, Mr. Jason? Okay. In, important thing that we need to understand uh with regards to antibiotic is that antibiotics are not the magic drug that cures everything. Mm -hmm. Antibiotic only cures infection that are caused by bacteria. And ah. uh, in case you're wondering, not all infections are caused by bacteria. Mm -hmm. So your children might not need antibiotics every time they get cough or cold. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, sometimes, like, most of the time, uh, cough and cold or any uh, influenza is caused by a uh, virus. Mm -hmm. So, Therefore, it is uh, not recommended to ask for antibiotics for your child if the doctor did not prescribe them. Because mm -hmm. uh, this may expose your child to unnecessary use of antibiotics and putting them at risk of side effects. Huh? Yep, antibiotic and resistance irrational. and the such. Yep, mm -hmm. and uh, irrational use of uh, antibiotic may contribute to antibiotic resistance as well, mm -hmm. which is a major concern globally. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. So if uh, cough and cold is caused by a virus or a change of weather, mm -hmm. antibiotic would not be necessary because they won't be effective at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, and most of the time, right, uh, cough and cold are usually temporary and will heal on its own after some time. Yes. But if it is caused by a bacteria infection, right, mm -hmm. the doctor will cause, uh, I mean, like, you will prescribe antibiotics if it is necessary. So if uh, whenever you are prescribed with antibiotics by the doctor, always remember to complete the antibiotic course as directed. Follow mm -hmm. the schedule as written on the medication label, whether or not it should be taken twice daily, uh, three times daily, or four times daily. Mm -hmm. And never share the antibiotic with anyone, as it might not be the right medication for their condition, because, like, you know, infection can be caused by a lot of different types of uh, bacteria, so there are certain antibiotics that only effective against a certain types of uh, bacteria. Mm -hmm. Right. So, of course, now the takeaway from that is never share your medicines no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, of course, without the use of, uh, you know, uh, medicines, there are also other options, alternatives. So what can parents do when the child is having cough or cold, Mr. Jason? Okay, it is very normal for children to experience uh, cough and cold along with the phase of growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, they can be managed through good rest and adequate hydration. Mm -hmm. uh, parents can try to increase fluid intake by offering various types of fluid, for example, in the form of plain water, fruit juice, milk, or chicken soup. Ah. And most age, the children will recover on their own and get better without any complications. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if really, uh, I mean, for the case of uh, more serious case, such as uh, if they are having, the children is having a uh, runny or stuff nose, saline nasal drops or spray can be used. Mm -hmm. And this will keep the nasal passages moist and decrease stuffy nose to make breathing easier for the child. Mm -hmm. And smaller children uh, who usually cannot cough out the mucus on their own, there is an uh, additional option which is uh, which we call as nasal suctioning. So uh -huh. parents can use a uh, syringe, a bulb syringe, mm -hmm. to clear mucus from the child's nose. And also as an alternative, parents may also learn the techniques to help clear mucus from their child's lungs. Oh, okay. So these are the few uh, uh, methods, uh, options that is available for the parents in case they, their children is uh, having cough and cold. Uh, because since they like you know, there isn't uh, a lot of medications that uh, the parents can give to the children. Mm -hmm. And also another thing is, it is always advisable to keep a thermometer at home for monitoring purposes, like especially mm -hmm. for uh, small babies. Yes. So if there is any fever or health, the health condition declines. Uh, for example, prolonged cough or cold, mm -hmm. uh, refusal to eat or drink or frequent without vomiting, mm -hmm. bring the children to see the doctor immediately. Yes. Or get a, get the a professional's opinion on what is exactly going on. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Mr. Jason, you have been very enlightening today. You've uh, let us know a lot. And of course, the, some of the key takeaways include uh, do not let children below the age of two take the medicines that, uh, you know, that you would normally give. Like uh, yeah. that uh, actually children below two are not uh, supposed to be taking medicine. Yeah, if it's yeah. between two to six, make sure that uh, they have uh, the opinion of a professional, either a doctor or a pharmacist. And of course, uh, antibiotics it should always be completed by the person who gets them and they are not essentially effective in every single uh, you know uh, event so those are some key takeaways now but before uh, we end this interview what is your take-home message to the audience okay uh, lastly uh, I would like to remind all our uh, listeners out there so our first thing when the if they are medicines right uh, always read the la uh, labels or patient information leaflets thoroughly Mm -hmm. Identify the active ingredient in the medication and check whether they are safe to be used for the children according to the age or not. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. Second, if uh, you have visited multiple clinics, hospitals or pharmacies, it is better or best to know the name of all the medications given for your child. If the name are uh, difficult to be remembered, right, because sometimes we've got a lot of fancy uh, the active ingredients name, uh, I would advise to write them down or bring the medications uh, together with you. Mm -hmm. uh, do not administer different medications uh, with the same active ingredients because this can cause overdose and increase the risk of uh, unwanted side effects to the children. Mm -hmm. and to make sure that you know the right way to use the medication, including the correct amount to be given and also the frequency as well as duration of the use. Then uh, always give them, uh, in children, right, always give the med medications using a measuring cup or syringe for an accurate dose because actually children, they are more sensitive. I mean, all people, they are actually quite sensitive to the dose because mm -hmm. those are actually, uh, uh, it will actually determine whether or not the medication is safe and effective yes. to that particular individual. Mm -hmm. And next, uh, now, I've, I've constantly uh, mentioned throughout this interview that never ever share the medication. Yes. Even though between like closely aged siblings, mm -hmm. uh, as like I said, the safety of the medication differs in each uh, age group. Definitely. And uh, in, now in terms of storage, uh, store the me medication according to the storage recommendation or the label because there are some uh, medication that needs to be stored uh, in a cool place, I mean, mm -hmm. in the fridge, you know, or some of them, they are not suitable to be stored in the fridge. So different types of medication, they have a different uh, storage properties. And mm -hmm. uh, also, another thing is to keep them in a safe place away from children's reach because some of them, they look, the, the medication may be colorful, so children may mistaken them with uh, candy. something like uh, candies, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. And uh, always teach the uh, children to practice good, good hand hygiene and protect your child from people who are sick. Mm -hmm. So if your child is having cough and cold, stay at home and try not to spread it to others until the child is fully recovered. As we say, like prevention is always better than cure. Definitely. And last but not least, right? If mm -hmm. the symptoms of uh, cough and cough persist, or if there is any other uh, complication, seek immediate treatment from the uh, doctor's in nearby healthcare facilities. Mm -hmm. So don't try to uh, self-medicate. Always yes. seek the professional's uh, help. Mm -hmm. And um, so, go on, yeah. Mr. Jason. Go on. Okay. Uh, yeah, and one thing is uh, the patients of public, right, if they have any uh, questions or any doubt regarding the medication they are taking or whether or not that particular medication or if there is any questions anything related to medication, they always feel free to contact the National Pharmacy Call Centre. Uh, the mm -hmm. number is 1-800-886-722. Uh, so uh, from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. except for public holidays. Okay. All right. So any questions, and we can definitely uh, direct them to that uh, number over there with the pharmaceutical di division and department. Now, uh, Mr. Jason, before I let you go, I just have one question that uh, I got uh, while you were speaking. Now, I would like to ask you, is it is it a good idea to for a parent uh, or a guardian to keep a journal regarding each and every medicine that the child takes? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a really good idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, if the, the parents, uh, it is always advisable to keep record of all the types of medications uh, that the children is, or rather a, a record of a journal of the, uh, the all the medications that mm-hmm. the children is taking. Because from there, then only we will know that, okay, uh, what kind of, first thing is what kind of medication that the children is taking. And mm-hmm. next thing is in case there is any like, you know, because sometimes children, they may experience uh, side effects or allergy, as we say, uh-huh. from uh, like specific types of medication. Then from there, the, actually we like, you know, the healthcare providers, uh, the doctors or the pharmacists can actually uh, it will assist them in determining which types of uh, medication that actually cause the allergy that in order and also for them to avoid like prescribing that particular medication to their children in the future. Mm-hmm. So that's why I mean it is a very uh, it is very advisable uh, to actually for all the parents out there to actually write everything down to journal or to record everything down that the children is taking. Okay. All right, Mr. Jason. Now, you have been more than very, very helpful today. Thank you so much for all the information, especially about medicines during the flood and also managing cough and cold in children. And I would like to extend a big thank you from us right here on Tracks FM. We hope you have a good day. Okay. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you and have a good day, Mr. Jason. All right, you too. All right, bye-bye. And that was Mr. Jason Tiong Kionkai, a pharmacist with the Ministry of Health Malaysia at the Pharmaceutical Services Division with the Penang State Health Department, talking to us about managing cough and cold in children and also staying safe after the floods. And hopefully he has uh, given you some ideas on how to manage your children, especially if they are facing cough and colds. And also, if you're facing the floods, what are some of the options that are available to you? And of course, that marks the end of Health on Tracks for for today we will be back in the next hour but right now it is back to the music on your favorite station as you know it this is tracks of fam